Welcome back to Finney Steel Garage. Today, we're going to be replacing the tyre pressure monitors on the Ford EcoBoost. Now, we're going to replace the tyre pressure sensor on the Ford EcoBoost. First of all, the observant ones, if you'll notice, I actually have a tidy clear bench and a nearly tidy garage. But more of that in another episode. We're going to be replacing the tyre pressure monitor sensor today on the Ford EcoBoost but it's probably the same on any car. The tire pressure sensor is, but the actual um, programming sequence is different. There's a sort of a way that you program the new sensors in. The batteries in them, they'll last probably four to five years, maybe a little bit longer, uh, and then you'll start getting errors. And in my daughter's car, we've got errors in all four of them. What I did was I said, well, let's just go to a tire garage, replace the tire pressure sensor. Um, so she rang around a few, rang one up, one of the local branded ones in the UK, the national ones in the UK, and uh, they said £100, and she said, oh, that's pretty good. Um, I'll come down this afternoon, uh, just checking, that's £100 for all four, isn't it? And he went, no, £100 per tyre, which I think is just, they were really saying they didn't want to do the job, because that's ridiculous. Four tyres for that car aren't £400, so I think they were just saying they don't want to do it, they don't want to get involved with the programming, or whatever, and we rang a few, and they all said the same thing. It seemed to be as if you didn't, if you weren't buying tires, they weren't interested. So what did I do? Changed it myself. Bought the sensors from a local um, trade counter. I think it was about 35 pound for four of them. Uh, I need to buy a little programming tool, which cost eight pound off eBay. And basically is, is that. Just a tiny little thing with one button on very insignificant and these are the actual tire pressure monitor sensors I'll just open one up and I'll show you so this is the actual tire pressure sensor there's a the number if you want to make a note of that that's from um, a local stockist near me and all it simply is is it's got the valve bit that you see that sticks out where you put the air in there it's got that part and then this bit goes inside and you can see it's got a um, like a watch battery, lithium battery. You can even see that's the shape there of a watch battery, that, that far end. And what it does is as it goes round, it sends, I think how it works is as it rotates round, it sends a radio frequency to the car to say, yes, I'm fine. Um, I'm not sure. I don't think it actually senses the pressure. Uh, although I could be wrong, it's either sensing the pressure and sending that by radio frequency or counting the revolutions and if the revolutions are fast more that means the tyre is smaller because it's deflated and that's doing that but I, I sort of doubt that because if it was just off revolutions you could use your ABS for that, anyway I'm waffling so somehow it detects the pressure and it tells the car and at the moment it's an MOT failure if it's not doing that and my daughter's car, all four of them aren't working so I'll show you how you can replace this at home. Okay, I've got a tire machine, a basic tire machine, which is just this one here, just a mechanical tire machine. But I'll show you, uh, you'll see if you Google it or go on YouTube, people have done it where they've used the car body weight and a scissor jack and push the tire down. We don't need to take the tire off. We just need to break the bead, squeeze the tire out of the way, remove the old one, put the new one in, pump the tire up, program them, do that four times, simple as that. Let's make a start. Okay, so we have two wheels off here. I've done two already. Uh, this is the front and rear on the driver's side. First thing you need to do is just let the air out. So then that will help you get the tire off. As I said before, you don't need to take the tire off. We're just actually cracking it off the rim. Um, so I've just got a simple little tool like this for removing the valve. Let the air out. We'll just do both of them and you're best just not rushing, just let all the air come out or else you're just fighting that trying to take the tyre off. So I'll just take a minute or two for the air to come out and then you can probably hear me again. So now we have all the air out the tyre, you can hear that going in and out, we need to break the bead on it. Now uh, as I say, if you don't have one of these machines at home, which not everyone's going to have, uh, you can actually do it using the weight of a car 
and what you do is you put this underneath put a scissor jack on there wind the scissor jack down and that will push the bead down if you look on youtube you'll see other people have done it but i've got the privilege of having this mechanical very simple tire remover so what i've got to do is just get that in the heel there and just go around and break the bead now i was very lucky on the other two that it went straight away so no doubt now i'm filming it it won't but let's see what we can do there we go so that went quite easy i'm just going to break it in two places so i've got sort of uh, 180 degrees around the valve you can see that's gone already so that's nice and easy so what i'm going to do now you can see the valve is in here i'm going to zoom in so you can get it but what i'm going to do i'm going to put two clamps on here just to give me a little bit of clearance to get in now you don't want to go crazy with these you don't want to break the beat you don't want to break the back of the tire but it will be enough just to hold it out the way it's like an extra pair of hands right so i'll get you in here now and you'll see where this is as you can see now i've zoomed right in on there and that's the actual device so what we need to do now and this is where it's a bit fiddly and if the tire was off you'd be able to get to the back of that screw we need to just get that screw out then we can pull this valve out and you'll see what i mean so what i've got i've just got a little torque bit on here it's just not not enough room to get a socket in and then we just need to crack it off and it's just one of these ones where it's going to be quarter of a turn at a time because the old one's sort of fairly corroded in right so I've just got that pulled right over there now might actually even be able to get the socket in You see we've got the screw out there so I'm going to pull that off so that's taking the head off and then I've got this tool here which is only a few pounds off eBay this will just screw onto the valve and then basically you pull the valve through to the front of the wheel like so and that's that bit off so the new one comes complete like this with the valve on so you just need to take the valve cap off like that Take the valve out because you can always you can pump the tire up faster with the valve not in. So I'll just take this valve out. There, so I've got the valve out there, and then I'm just going to take that screw out the back there. Take this off so I can pull it through. I probably, actually, I probably don't need to do that. I can probably push the whole thing in like that in one go. So I just put the new valve in there, screw this device on. And just give it a short tug to pull it into place. There, just went with a bit of a click. So that's it. That is the device replaced. So we take the clamps off now and what we need to do is just get the tyre sometimes you just have to push the rim a bit like this just to get this tyre here to seat on the edge of the rim so you can get air to go in and when you see the air go in you might not be able to hear me now with a valve uh, with the tyre machine with the pump with the air machine oh god what do you call it air pump so we're going to push it up, just push that in and you'll see it pop in and it should have a satisfying bang to it. You can just see it pulling in there now. And three, two, one, bang. There we go. Then we just screw the valve back in. 
pump it up to the correct pressure. There we go. That was up to 1.8. Put the valve cap on. Job done. What was that? Five minutes per tyre. Saved myself £90 a wheel if you'd have gone to the garage. So all that remains for me to do now is put the tyres back on and show you how to program them. Now programming them obviously, this is how you do it for a Fiesta EcoBoost. It may be different for other cars. I know all the Fords are the same, but other cars are going to be different. But I thought what would be fun is, let's take one of these apart and see what's inside it. Now let's just crack the case open. I think there's some sort of pressure transducer at one end. I think there's some sort of pressure transducer at one end and uh, a, a just a little watch battery in the other end. I think that's all it simply is. Well, let's just have a quick look inside. Let's see if this will get into it. Right, so what have we got inside then? Look, we've got like a little printed circuit board. And there's our little watch battery. Look. So that's what it is inside. Now, I don't know if it's hearing things, but I did hear a little bit of a pfft when I opened it. And I'm not sure, maybe that is the pressure sensor there. There's a little hole in it there. And maybe it sees force on there. Um, converts that to a radio signal and then transmits that to the car. Let's see if this one makes the same noise when I open it. Yes. So you probably heard that. So there's obviously some sort of gas in here. There's obviously some sort of gas in here to monitor it, uh, which is some sort of uh, transducer on here. So that converts pressure into an electrical signal. And then the battery here, and the, this little radio transmitter will transmit the signal um, to the car and then it knows what the actual tyre pressure is. So there we go, dead simple. Right, let me get the other wheels on and then I'll show you how we programme them. Yeah, so, so it's quite simple there then really, isn't it? It's obviously got some sort of transducer in the end here which monitors the pressure, detects the pressure through that little hole that we saw, that orifice converts it to a signal and then with a the radio transmitter transmits it to the car via the battery. So what happens is the batteries fail after sort of, they say five to ten years, but it, it varies. I mean the cars are 2015 and, it, and it's 2025, so we're ten years on and all the batteries have failed. But that's only cost me, it was something like eight or nine pound each to replace and the garage wanted a hundred pound to replace those and you've seen how easy I replace them. What was it, five minutes a tire if that? The programming is pretty quick as well and the programmer that I had to buy, which is just this little button, that was only eight pound off eBay. It's very simple to do. And uh, I'll show you that now once we've got the wheels on. So we're now onto the programming side of things, uh, inside the car. Now this is where, it's a bit clunky. What you have to do, turn the ignition on, press the brake pedal, turn the ignition on and off three times, leave it on, press the brake pedal again, turn it off, turn it back on, press the brake pedal again three times. So, turn it on, press the brake pedal, turn it off, one, one, two, three, press the pedal again, one, two, and they heard the beep then so that's now gone into a programming mode it's come up there saying train left front tyre so what we do we take the button press the button and uh, it should within a couple of seconds beep it'll then say train right front tyre right rear tyre right left tyre and then it should come up and say all tyres are programmed so what I'll do, I'll just go around, show you holding the device on the tyre and then I'll let you see through all the scrolling inside what it does. What I'm doing now, I'm just going to hold this device next to the tyre. There, it beeps. 
Now inside it says train right front tyre. So we take it to the right front tyre. There we go. Then it says train right rear tyre. So we take it to the right rear tyre. Finally, it says train left rear tyre. Yeah, uh, let's see what it says inside now. It now says training complete. And now hopefully the tire warning, which is here that we've had on for months has gone. And there's no warning in the display over there as well. So that's it, job done. Uh, just been for a quick test drive, uh, it's okay. No tire pressure monitor fault light on anymore. Thank goodness for that, that's off and that'll be an MOT pass. Not that it's due an MOT, but there we go, next time it's done. And just to recap, it probably took, once the tyre was off, or once the wheel was off, probably took five, 10 minutes per tyre, if that. And it's cost me about eight pound per tyre compared to, I was quoted a hundred pound at one of the national tyre places in the UK. But as I say, I think they didn't really want to replace them. They really wanted to sell me a new tyre and a new valve. Therefore, it might have been cheaper then. But uh, there's another quick fix. Happy daughter as well. And um, we'll be moving on to uh, some Porsche jobs next. Uh, please keep watching. Thanks and goodbye for now.